dass hier Kamera, vor allem das Fest des Jahres Franks, der Begang in der Burde, waren die Kamera eine Funktion und eine toten Kulte Könige. Speak English, bro. Yazılıkaya is the largest known Hittite rock sanctuary. The main part of this sacred site is formed by roofless court-like chamber A and much smaller chamber B. So let's talk about Yazılıkaya a bit. So we are here in uh, Hattusha in yeah. Boğazkale, Turkey and this place was built by Hittites and especially this Yazlıkaya area uh, was restored by Tutalia the Fort, right? Yeah, many of the gravings made uh, by the Tutalia the Fort so uh, gravings that we see here but some of them early in the 16th century Here we have Tetu in the left uh, the male deity, the, uh, the storm god, storm god of Hatta. Actually, uh, Teshub was a Hurin god. Then uh, Hittites later adapted uh, by the Hurin influence. So, uh, an important name is Pudihepa uh, for this assimilation. Uh, Pudihepa was uh, was a worshiper of Hurin gods. So, when he came to the Hittite dynasty, uh, she brought uh, many Hurin gods herself so uh, in the left we see it's Teshub and Teshub stands on two other mountain gods so you can identify mountain gods by their uh, leveled skirts uh, there are many of them because there are many mountains in Antolia and uh, on the right we see Hepat Hepat is an important goddess and here uh, she stands on a puma a cougar uh, and there and the minor deities all uh, around them. I want to talk about Pudehepa a bit because she is a very important woman figure, let's say female figure in history. She was wife of Hattusila the third, right? Yes. And she was so important that she directly sent letters to the Ramesses the second and she was doing these diplomatical stuff by herself and she had all kind of power as Tavananna and actually she was very important in Anatolian uh, cult let's say and here we see her old figure because Hepat was a Sumerian goddess right? Yeah, it's an interesting story actually uh, and I think uh, that's the thing that these things make me love archaeology because uh, first of all we have a Sumerian queen in the Sumerian queen list from the early dynastic period. Uh, uh, her name was uh, Kubaba first of all and then uh, she became a kind of myth so people believed that she reigned for 100 years and she talked to Marduk so there are many myths about her. And then uh, this cult became larger and larger in the Hurrian region and they called uh, her Habat. So when the Hittites uh, took the Habat as their uh, sun goddess, it's become very important. And uh, Chata talked about Pudayapa and how uh, she's an important political character in the Hittite history. Uh, name of the Pudayapa come from Hepa, which was another female ruler back in the days of Sumer. So, back in the days of Sumer means uh, 3000 BC and the and what? Like 20, uh, 23, 23rd century BC. And like. the Pudehepa here, we're talking about Pudehepa, and she was living in the era of uh, Kadesh War. Uh, yes, uh, she was from uh, Kizuvatna. Uh, today's uh, Hatay and uh, North Syria region mm -hmm. and uh, she became a bride of the king of the Hittites. So in chamber A we have another graving right here which is Tutalia IV, one of the late Hittite kings and he made nothing but construction let's say. Uh, is it right? So uh, he restored the place, uh, he added many engravements to uh, Yazlukaya place 
and uh, you can see that it, there is an alluvian name uh, of the Tudalia so we know that this is Tudalia the fort so again here uh, he stands on mountains uh, you can see the mountain shape and uh, very large indeed so he is one of the supreme Hittite kings so he stands on the mountains and actually we can say that down in Hattusha center in the city center of Hattusha, let's say, uh, he restored most of the places because uh, in heated annals uh, we are told about lots of fires that ruined the city and uh, Tutalia made the restoration and here he is in Yazılkaya also. So maybe we can talk about the Luvin inscription. Uh, it's an Anatolian hieroglyphics and we don't know any relatives of it. So. It's like Egyptian hieroglyphics, but they are different by nature. They are, they did, they are born in different places. Hittites used cuneiform uh, when they were uh, messaging, when they were writing letters. But when they make monumental arts, they use Luvian. Uh, a lot of people can read them. So you see a foot, it means walk. You see a man, it means a man. So uh, probably it is more widely understood by the public. So when Hittites building monumental architecture, they uh, use Luvian uh, inscriptions. And in later period, the Luvian will uh, dominate the written uh, life in Hittites and Kinform will lose this power. <laughs> There is a very narrow passage over there uh, to do chamber B and uh, it almost feels divine. This place uh, hosted many rituals, uh, funeral rituals of the kings. Definitely feels divine and creates uh, other emotions. Here we have Tutalia the fort again, right? Yes, we have Tutalia the fort, but uh, the figure, the little figure is the Tutalia the fort. Uh, the big one. So. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but there are two figures. So one hat over there and one hat over there. And the, the big figure is uh, is a deity, uh, Sharuma, I guess. Uh, deity is Sharuma, the son of Hepat. Uh, so we in this scene, we see that the deity uh, hugs the Tudaya fort and shows Tudaya is accepted by the gods. Accepted and supported, Accepted right? Accepted and supported, so yeah. Uh, because in Hittites, the uh, support of gods is so vital because... It's still important. Yeah, it, it is still it important, is still but, important. But to keep this conversation in ancient ages. To be able to keep the throne. Kings said that my father was a god because a Hittite king no, becomes a deity as soon as he dies. So uh, if you are a prince, then your father will become a god when you become a king. So uh, you're in a supreme position that no one can object to any of your decisions or some things that can threat your throne cannot happen. Yes. So this is basically a symbolic scene that we can see that son of sun gods, Shurima, is supporting Tutalia IV. Uh, it is symbolic. But it's also politic. The leaders should be loved by the gods. But leaders get cursed, actually. The kings get cursed when they die. I mean, they may be called as cursed kings. Just like Shupililuma the first. He broke the rules, rules of Telepiunu and he killed his brother and then, bam, he lost everything. So he, he died brought, because of plague. and Yeah, he brought plague to the Hittite. And we have the other scene, mm -hmm. which we saw in Ergal. And Nergal is all about the plague. So uh, here we have uh, Nergal, the, uh, a deity of underworld. And uh, Nergal was originally a Mesopotamian deity. So in Mesopotamia, uh, he's not just a generic underworld uh, uh, deity, but he's directly the controller of plague. So we see that Nergal finds its place in Hittite uh, pantheon. Uh, because the importance of plague perhaps played a role in the Hittite history. 
So uh, you talk about the Shpurima. Shpurima uh, killed his brother uh, to be king and then uh, it was a sinful act. And uh, later on his son Murshili will say that uh, because of this sinful act we are cursed. I just want to cut in real quick here to explain, summarize what happened earlier before Shupililuma. The, there was a king called Telipinu and before Telipinu all kings were fighting for the throne and they were killing each other and so Telipinu decided on new rules that will decide who is the next king. The bigger son will be the king he said. Shupililuma here in this case broke the rule and he killed his brother who became the king and he eventually got the throne and then the era we are talking about is the same era with Tutankhamun, right? Yeah. Yeah, Tutankhamun uh, was... Like Akhenaten. The, yeah, Akhenaten and, and, and then his the son Tutankhamun. Uh, Akhenaten's son Tutankhamun. Yes. It's a very different story. It's a very strange story yeah. though. But And uh, it's all connected. And it's yeah, all they're connected all connected. To connected. Yeah. And, uh, so they are not different universe. Yet. So when you talk about the Egypt, Egypt feels like uh, a different place, a strange place. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the Hittites and you look at the history, you see that they are all connected and their actions affect affects them all. There is a strange story and very very famous story in Egypt, Egypt both Egypt and Hittite history is Ankesenamon's letter to Shupililuma the first. If you want to talk about it, let's start with Aten. Let's start with Aten religion. Aten religion. And let's start with Akhenaten. But it, it would take ages to talk no, about No, 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 it, it will not. Let me just sum up. Just for recap you. it. Okay, okay, okay. Just summarize so, it. So uh, we got this crazy pharaoh uh, whose name is Akhenaten. I later changed his name uh, to have Aten in his name because uh, he believed one god. So and uh, his name was Aten, and Aten is a sun deity. So mm -hmm. they are all strange. They are, have uh, crazy rituals that uh, they look into the sun and uh, for uh, hours, so they go blind. So just all kind of crazy things. And uh, the Egypt rebelled against it. Akhenaten couldn't control the whole Egypt with a whole can, new can we just Can we just cut here real quick? Because I want to talk about it. In a in a video in a special video about this topic. How about okay. that? Okay. Okay. Uh, so will, we can nice. start the story from the Aten, from Akhenaten. Then we can go on till Murshila II, right? Yes. Then it will be great. And let's talk about this story in Hattusha, at the city center, at the big castle, right? How about that? That will be great. Yes, that will be great. So we are, we will be heading to the big castle, which is the palace of Hittite kings. And we will be talking about this story over there. And it will be a different video. So let's finish this Yazlikaya. What are the last words? So uh, this is my first time to come here. And I was quite shocked. It feels amazing. Uh, first of all, this place is very high. So. When you look at the, uh, the town, you see the, uh, everything, first of all. And this, this feels uh, different. Do you yes. agree with me? Yes, completely, yes. So, uh, and here in Yazılıkaya, there are great uh, piece of art. There are so, great hieroglyphs, great gravings, and everything uh, here looks very unique and looks so divine, I guess. This is the video of Yazılıkaya and we're heading to Hattusha to shoot some other videos. So if you're watching this video right now, probably there are videos on my YouTube channel that you may be interested in. And probably you can check the videos of Hattusha and video that we mentioned about the story of Ethan till Murshila II. Okay, see you in the next videos. <laughs>